Good morning guys. So I decided to redo this video today. I was doing it yesterday with some of the Celine Dion tracks and <laughs> the cue files were so messed up it was just irking me. So I'll probably put those in at the end um, because it's a slightly different um, variation of this video. Um, so basically this is for people working with uh, downloaded FLAC files or creating FLAC files. And one of the problems is if anybody's got any type of OCD like me, you like to have your, your, your music library not only neat, but you want to have the folder art in there. You want to have it to where you can just click one file to bring up the uh, album. Similar to popping the CD in. And you also, if you load it on your iPod or something, you want all the tracks to be named correctly. There's nothing worse than... Oh, I love this song, and then you look, and it's unknown track, unknown artist. It's just, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Um, recently, I've been downloading uh, more music in FLAC. For those that don't know what FLAC is, it's Free Lossless Audio Codec, and it's basically a lossless version of uh, ripping a CD. So, where most people think I'm going to rip my CD with iTunes or another program, you think about ripping it to MP3. But what a lot of people don't realize is when you rip your music to MP3, even at the highest bit rate of 320, which I'm not going to say it sounds bad. I mean, if I was going to rip it and go MP3, I would go 320. But the problem is it still strips some of the music that our ears are unable to hear. Now, why is that a bad thing? Well, if you're just playing your music for the rest of your life on a pair of headphones that are not good headphones, or you're listening to it on your laptop speaker, then it really won't matter. But if you ever want to take your music from your computer to, say, uh, some hi-fi DJ gear or higher end equipment, then you're going to definitely notice the difference in the quality. Um, so if you're watching this video and maybe you downloaded a flag and you're like, what the heck, or you're thinking about ripping your entire library like me, um, flag is definitely the way to go. Now, uh, I will say that flag does take up more hard drive space, but in this day and age, um, storage has come down dramatically. So to me, to be able to save my music in a superior format like FLAC, I'm able to retain the full quality of the actual CD without sacrificing any quality. So this is, at the end of the day, how you want your library to look. Now what happens when you get music like this? You download it and you get one file like this. Now in this case, you, you have to look. Um, I already did the conversion on this one. Um, and made it a single file that's FLAC. Um, it actually came in this monkey format. So again, I left it in this format because a lot of times you'll download it and it'll be in this format or it'll be just a, a single FLAC file like you just seen earlier. So what you'll need to do this correctly, you'll need to get the monkey, this, monkey's audio. This free converter, I'll put the links in the video. Um, this will allow you to convert when there, when it's just one single FLAC file like this. It'll allow you to convert it back to a wave so you can split it um, based on the queue. And then of course EAC. So for this monkey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and save you guys the trouble. Basically, what you would do is drag and drop this into here, and then just click this arrow and put this on decompress. When you click that, it'll take and put it back to this file. So a lot of times what happens, I'm going to go ahead and edit this to show you in that, is this, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll put it at the end of the Celine Dion, what I went to. This right here will say dot flac. I'm going to go ahead and save these changes really quick to show you. So when you go to split it, how I do it is I go tools, split by cue sheet, with gaps corrected. And we're working on living, yeah, in the material world. So let's go back to here, living in the material world. So you'll see this error right here when you try to do it. Error in cue sheet. So when that happens, and that's why I, sim uh, I actually did it on purpose because I ran into this like on every single track in my Celine Dion, Celine Dion collection. So what you do is you uh, open with, and if it doesn't show Notepad here, you'll have to hit uh, choose another app, and then just tell it to open with Notepad. And usually it's line 7, but you just go down, and you see it says Wave, change this to .wav. 
again, if somebody knows an easier way to get EAC to actually support the, the actual whole FLAC file like this, like this one right here, but not a dot .wave, dot .flac, please let me know. I've been doing it like this for years, so I take whatever it is, if it's a FLAC or a monkey or whatever, ape, and I convert it to a dot .wave. Now, as you see, there's only the, the original ape monkeys file and then the wave that we made. So then what you do is split, gaps corrected, select it, select it again, and it's going to automatically, um, basically based on the cue sheet, split it into usable tracks, like which is what we want. Now this could be fine if you're not worried about space, they're, they're in wave format, which takes up a tremendous amount more of space. So then what I do is right in EAC, I go back in again and hit compress. And we are on live in the material world. So we're going to go back here, CD, and then just select all these. So there's 13 tracks when we hit open. And I don't know why it makes you do this again, but sometimes it comes up, you have to hit it again. And then you'll see it'll start replacing these with temp. The first time I did it, I thought it was overwriting the original, but it kind of puts it in a temp file and then changes it from wave to flag. So the end result on this download here is to fix the flag that was just one long file. And like I said, that may be fine if you're going to reburn it to a disk. Um, I just feel like burning it again or using even a, a burning simulator is just further degrading the quality or risking uh, errors. Where this way, it's, it's, it's keeping the music intact. So, that's it. That basically gets you your single file that's an ape or just an individual flack back into uh, individual tracks. So, you may have to re redo that again to see the three steps involved in that. Now, I go a step further and I use a program called Tag and Rename. And what I'll usually do is load up the actual album. Then I'll go Tools, Get from Track. Oh god, this one's bad. I didn't even fill it in, so we have to fill it in manually. George Harrison, and that was, uh, stuck. was that stuck in the material world? I don't even remember. Let's just, uh, let's pull all of them. Uh, living in the material world. Okay, so there it is. So we're going to hit that one. We're going to go over here to load album. And it even tells you if there's a track missing. So these should all be checked. So the light, and you just kind of go down and make sure they're in the right order. So deep blue, whistle blue. So it's saying that there's one track actually missing on here, this last track, but it's okay. We can click okay. That went ahead and filled in the metadata for that. Now the file name's still not right. You can use this mask editor. I did a video on this a long time ago. If anybody's interested, I can do another. But basically, how you want your file name, you do here. So I usually do artist, then track number. These these environment variables right here will allow it to rename it based on artist, track number, and title. So when I, when I hit rename, it put it. So I like that. Then what I do is I go here, file, rename, folder. That'll put the folder in like this. So year and then the album. And then I hit control, alt, and s. And that creates a nice little, so let me open up the folder here and show you. It creates this little file that you can just double click. So there it is. It's like popping the CD in. Gives me 13 tracks. And look at, look at this beautiful file name, guys. So this is uh, part one here of, you know, when you download a FLAC and they come in, you know, like, like Monkey's format or Ape or just one FLAC file. Like, that's okay if you just want to listen to it the way it is, but... Again, it's 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 just one file that you have to skip through. So if you're not really worried and you just want to skip through it, then you know you can just listen to it the way it comes. But for me, I like to have the individual tracks. It's just force a habit. You know, when you open up a folder with music, you kind of want to be able to look at all the tracks like this. So hopefully this helped. And um, if you guys have any suggestions about or you use EAC and you know how to get it to natively support FLAC, you know, that whole FLAC file like that one I showed you earlier, do leave it, uh, leave it in the comment description. Like I said, this is just how I've been doing it and figured maybe it might help somebody out. All right, so 
earlier I, I was here and I showed you guys when they come as just a single uh, flag file. So I want to go ahead and just add this to the video. So that converter I told you to get, this is, again, this is how I do it. This is one long flag file. If we open it, it's basically the whole album in one flag, uh, like this. And while this is, like I said, fine for playing, it's 54 minutes and you have to kind of skip through. You can't just skip like normally, like hitting next track, and you can't even see what all the songs are. Winamp didn't even pull it in as anything usable. So what I do is I, when it's like this, when you download it this way and it's just a flak file, I drag and drop it into here. And I went in here and set the options to basically put the converted output in the source folder. So what it's going to do is basically just add it here. This takes, well, it doesn't take long. And as far as I'm understanding, when you convert between FLAC, WAV, and uh, that dot .APE, you don't lose any quality because it's, they're, all, they're all the same file in a sense. It's just a different container. Um, so basically we're just taking this from the full-out FLAC that came with the file and uh, putting it back to its original uncompressed WAV uh, format. This doesn't take too long. I'm doing a lot on the computer right now. I'm recording um, and doing some conversions. I don't recommend you do anything while you're doing this step because it could that could potentially... Um, interfere with the uh, quality of the file, like if it like, freezes or something, I don't know, it's just a good idea when you're doing this type of conversion to let it do its thing while not doing anything else. It doesn't take that long, maybe about a minute or two. So when it gets done, you're going to see it's going to, it'll leave the original, the, the, that 45 minute uh, flat file that again came with it, it's going to create an additional file called dot .wave, where it's just about at the end there. Alright, so we're done with the converter, and if you see this is a new file it created. So what you're going to want to do is match this file name with the with the existing set. So what I usually do is just right click on the original flag that came in it and name that one that was just converted to dot .wave just so it matches. This usually will work with the way the Q file is so you don't have to edit it. Um, we're going to go in here just, just to check it so we don't have to come back edit uh, nope, see I have to edit it. So it's right here it says dot flack. We're going to change this. It'd be nice if, if EAC just allowed that dot flack file and, and, and automatically converted it. Maybe that would be something the developers can add or maybe I'm just not doing it right. No matter how I name that to take flack, uh, to, to, to use the flack file the way it comes, it basically says it, it, it will not do flack. It has to be in wave or... So anyways, that basically, so we started off with, uh, let me move this over so you guys can see the types I'm working with. We started off with a 45 minute flak file. We then used that converter to convert that to an uncompressed wave. And if I did this correct, I should be able to go in EAC and do what we did earlier. So split by wave with gaps corrected. CD1, click it, click it again. Why it makes you do this twice, I have no idea. And the the Q the Q was okay. If it if it would have been something wrong, it would have aired out right there. So again, we have the individual tracks that are dot wave. So usually, right after I do that step, I just go to compress and then do this step right right. They're like almost in sync with one another. All ten tracks open, and then of course it's going to ask me again. I, I really think a feature should be to allow it just to while you're working to save a few clicks just to put it in the directory that you're working in already. And you can see here it is converting it. So that's it. You basically um, take the flak, make a wave out of the 45 minute file. Once that's done, go in here, split. That'll give you individual waves and then use the same EAC app to recompress it. It's kind of counterintuitive, but this is the only way I found to take when it's when, when, when it's just a flak file that's the whole album in one file to get it back to individual flak tracks again if somebody out there knows an easier way to split it up based on the cue sheet without having to do these steps please do share because I've been doing it like this for about as long as EAC has been around and this is just how I do it so let's minimize this I'm doing a lot. Does not like that at all. So, the end result is going to be these tracks like earlier, but I think I might have actually killed it.
there it goes. So basically that goes into my uh, mentioning earlier not to do too much with it doing the screen capture and uh, encoding a video <laughs> in the background. This is an i7 with 32 gigs of RAM, but still um, conversions like this, it's, it, they're full uncompressed files. They do take up uh, some resources while you're doing them. So again, the end result here is the individual tracks in FLAC format. So yeah, let me know what you guys think.